Hello everyone, yes, I'm going to talk to you today on my uh, 65th birthday, July 7, 2020. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's 2020, and be literally, probably because of my age, I almost said, still said 1900. Part of me is still, well, I was born in the 20th century, so... Yeah, that's my frame of reference. I am um, receiving all sorts of thank, uh, happy birthdays from all over the world and all kinds of people. Some notable people. I won't bother to go into that because all of the, all they're all equally important to me. It it is stunning to me who notices me, you know, in the world. I'll say that. So yesterday. My younger brother stopped by for basically a, a birthday visit and to uh, smoke some weed. Yeah, we're here in an illegal state. One of the last, that shows you how backwards to me Nebraska is. One of the remaining states where marijuana is still illegal. But yeah, he came by and took care of brother, you know, a little bit of a... Um, refreshment while he was here the uh, postman uh, stopped by his truck and he had a bunch of packages for me and my brother marveled at it and I said well you know I receive records to review and people give me rec music but these are probably timed for my birthday so I got five packages yesterday thank you all um, I just want to acknowledge everything you know because I could only sample I tried to sample almost everything but for example I got one box from from a John. This is all in the box. And these. So uh, uh, this, I'm just going to just touch on some of the stuff because, John, you didn't send this stuff to me to review. You sent it to me to give to me. Thank you. Some of the stuff I appreciate. Some of the stuff it's like, well, we already talked about the Rick Wakeman. I'll show it, though I'll show it. Among the, the vinyl he sent me, which is the least interesting of everything that he sent me, the vinyl, is this Rick Wakeman album, Criminal Record. Now, when you look at the back of it and you see that it's Chris Squire and Alan White, you know, you get, you know, I get hopeful. But, now, I think I, not think, I know I would like Rick Wakeman personally, but he's not the kind of person that I hang around. He likes to drink. He's a he's like a, a real joker. I don't mind jokers, but I'm not drawn to them. You know, he's like a he's just like a, a regular bloke, and it really comes across in this music in that it's just really not interesting. And it's kind of like what in the, you know, look at the picture. Okay, no appeal there, none whatsoever. Okay, it just but it just gets better. So, but John, you know me, you know I'm honest. So there's nothing for me to be worried about. I can be honest. You send you send me stuff. Thank you. I, I appreciate it, brother. Sent me a couple of DVDs. I watched most of this last night. Yeah, I absorbed music deeply and a lot. Herbie Hancock's Possibilities. I never bought this record, but I was curious about it. And it was neat to see the process behind it. You know, this gives it some... Um, Vignettes, working with people. Um, frankly, I found most interesting on here him working with uh, Annie Lennox. The Brian Eno part was, of course, interesting. Um, the other person that I love, Trey Anastasio from Fish. Their um, part on here is really, really well. Interesting how I just got this Nicholas Godin album from a viewer and in John's box is this air uh, moon safari and um, you know I, I I like air you know they're okay but it's pop it's light to me you know so it's like I've never you know I bought a couple things by them but it's kind of forgettable but it's nice to receive this yes thank you folks that's happy birthdays happening on my phone so I do I appreciate this well yeah thank you Okay, 
When it comes to the CDs, it was a mixed bag, and I haven't gotten into everything. He sent me these promo Keith Jarrett's. Keith Jarrett is prime listening, so he sent me this box of music from Brazil. Um, I love the music of Brazil. It's got the people on it, so this is going to be some good listening. I checked this out, Tuatara Instrumental. They're good. The thing I got to say, and this is where some people and I leave, this is good, but it gets into that bluesy, jammy sort of sound that I, I'm, that when it starts to percolate, honestly, I have a reaction. It's like, okay, I'm done here. What's next? So this is good, but it, when it start, when it started to move into that jammy sort of bluesy stuff, it, lo it lost me, it loses me. Thank you. Charlatans UK Pop, you know, I went ahead and played this because it's like I've never bothered to bother to buy their records and I know why. They're good at what they do, but it's like, uh, there it is, you know, like the bananas, a banana a day. It's all right. I love guitar music. He sent me some guitar music. He sent me some Charles Lloyd and it's on ECM, so I like that, but I'm, I'm not into Charles Lloyd. Charles Lloyd, nah, I'm not into Charles Lloyd. So thank you. The most interesting um, thing that you sent in that bunch, I, I appreciate it. Thank you for the birthday gift. This is the book on James Brown, Kill Him and Leave. I'll be reading this and I'll let you know what I think about the book. I read all the time. I read all kinds of stuff. A lot of um, nonfiction stuff that people would call self-help is what I read or philosophical is what I'm interested in. And then the other CD that's of note is Tangerine Dreams Electronic Meditation. Of course, I have a vinyl copy of it. It's nice to have it on CD. I played it just because I got it. You know, I love this music. And this is of interest. Logic Moon, I See Planets. Kind of a quiet, electronic, droney thing. What's interesting is this is a small label that presents everything in a cool package. That I, I like that, John. It's of interest. They present the record, the CDs like um, like little mini records. That's fun. That's fun. You know, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my, I, I, I listen listen to a snatch of this, and this sounds like the good like good stuff. Like well done, quietly brooding and slowly moving electronic drony stuff. It's always a place for stuff like that. So I got that stuff in from um, James. The other, the vinyl, it's like it was inconsequential. Um, this organ music, no thanks. Yeah, no thanks. I live in a neighborhood with a lot of Mexican people. And so I hear this music. I don't know where this is from, but it's close enough. It's like, uh, uh, uh. okay, Schumann. I listen to this, Robert Schumann. I've never been much of a fan of Robert Schumann. I love classical music, but um, I listened and this, my thought was, okay, so I love classical music, but I don't remember ever getting into Schumann. Let's listen to this. Now I remember why. This, what he's doing here is kind of like, it's, uh, it's not very compelling. It's like parlor music really well done but that's why it's never really caught my attention and then strawberry statement this the soundtrack with the, all this well-known music on it that we all know about i never saw the movie once again john thank you another john sent me this cd told me he was going to send it and it finally got here bootleg of lamb lies down on broadway finally released lamb lies in rochester a, a radio broadcast you know, when, when I put this on, they say on here that it's never been released, but bootlegs get around. I already have this as a bootleg, but I now have a legitimate re release of it. But when it started, you know, I thought to myself, wait, I, yeah, I got this. I, I do. Thank you, John. I have this. I've had this in my bootleg Genesis collection for a long time. You know, this was, in a way, this was the, even though Peter Gabriel's, the birth of his daughter had the most to do with him leaving the band, the fact that they went out on tour and played this 
front to back before anyone had ever heard it was definitely not the smartest thing. Thank you, John. Arthur in England sent me, told me he was going to be sending me some Basil Kirchen, and they arrived yesterday. Love Basil Kirchen, been wanting his records on vinyl forever. They're collectible. And back when the one that was on either Island or Antilles was out, I just failed to pick it up. I don't remember if I ever owned it. I might have briefly, but... These you can file under library music. I love library music. I really do. Some of my favorite stuff is library music. Abstractions of the Industrial North. I've played this one. I haven't played Primitive London yet. I like these a lot. I'll take a quick um, breather and say, um, among the comments yesterday, some someone asked me about more avant-garde stuff and why I don't show it. Well, I do at times. You may have missed it. But the thing is, I listen to a lot of music that I never show, and um, that's the main thing I want to say, you know, is, and then also, I, I just like what I like, you know. Um, I like pop music. It, really, I don't have to think about it. I'm over here in my home listening to music with these ears. I don't have to explain or uh, justify my taste to anyone, right? I can listen to whatever I want to listen to, right? And so I do. I listen all over the dial, all kinds of stuff. I don't show a lot of what I listen to. There's a lot. I just don't show it. So, Tim Jones of the band Cheer Accident got a hold of me and said, I want to send you, I want to send you some stuff. And he came through yesterday. Right on time, Tim. We talk on on um, on uh, Facebook. As shitty as Facebook Facebook is, it's a real connector. I appreciate being able to be connected to people on Facebook, even though Facebook sucks. It does suck. So, from Chicago, the progressive, they're progressive. They really are. The band is hard to pin down. Cheer accident. I got turned on to them years ago. Just I saw their first album, Several Roots Tree Dies, and uh, somehow decided to get it. It's great. So I'm showing these, Tim. If you see this, I, I'll I, I'll come back to it. But I did play everything because I like your band so much. What sequel? Thank you. And then the vinyl. I'll show this one first, and I'll talk about the newest one, because I listened to that one the most yesterday. But he sent me two of their vinyl releases. Cheer Accident. Fades. Comes with this, too. On the Skin Graph label. I just loaded, noticed that. Getting labels to put your stuff out is, kind of, is an interesting process. Not always pleasant. But they were able to get this out on cheer uh, on that label. Uh, it comes on a, you know. I played a bit of this, and it's interesting because it, it starts off completely different from the new album. It's almost like it's two bands, but as they go, you can hear, yeah, okay, this is Cheer Accident. But this band is very eclectic, and they mix in a wide variety of influences on the music okay let me just put that away i'll use the new one as a the best example this is a new cheer accident album called chicago 20 and what a lovely pastiche i love the fact that the um takeoff on the chicago logo is so um it's so it's purposely like this you know, it's home, homemade. They just got it done. Cheer Accident, Chicago 20. I love this new album. And this is really strong. It starts off, the way it starts off is it starts off like it sounds something like the band This Heat. This Heat. Then when the, the, the vocals come in, the reference point that I told to Tim yesterday in a, in a quick note was 
then it's art bearers but then when we get to the second song it's like we're, we're, we're into pop and rock very eclectic band really good progressive for sure they do things with rhythm timing uh, writing structures and they're from Chicago at one point as I listened to this I listened to this all the way through twice yesterday really like this at one point it's like well damn I can't they sound like they're from Chicago I couldn't pinpoint what it was but all of a sudden I'm listening and cheap trick just popped into my head that's another famous Chicago band not that they were sounding like cheap trick but there was something about the music that was saying to me well this is a Chicago band these guys sound like Chicago and then on the inside on the insert there's a little story it's kind of like I think this is a bit of a send-up kind of like a what if kind of like what if Chicago had not gone the way they did what might have happened perhaps that's the premise behind this but um really like this Tim I hope people pick up on this um I think that your acting accident is so good it doesn't make sense that they're not more acclaimed even in the progressive rock world you don't hear about cheer accident I think you should so I really dug that now I'm, now that I'm looking and thinking did the, Tim send me two CDs he may have but that's that's what I that's what I that's what I got and I think that's everything I really appreciate so much everyone I really appreciate it so very much thank you so much and oh well here's that's right I knew I got another I got a whole nother package not package but another record from Lionel Williams better known as Vinyl Williams he has the band Vinyl Williams he sent me a black vinyl copy of his new album Azure I met Lionel um, when my band Chemicals opened for them. They were on tour a few years ago, came to Omaha, and we got to open for them. It was a great show. Not a lot of people there, but a very mutual, respective show. Um, I was very happy that we honestly blew Lionel Williams away. He, you know, he said, I wasn't expecting. Chemicals was so in intense that we couldn't, we blew up, fell apart. I love what Vinyl Williams is doing. It's very dreamy and cosmic. And it's getting better. I've got two of his other albums. And he's got this sound. And these are his graphics. And the sound really fits this ambrosia, colorful, cosmic-y approach that he has to computer graphics. The music fits it. He's on a trip similar to mine in that he's his mind is is questing and it's open and he's wanting to understand reality and he talks about it and he seems like an egghead to some people and I that's that but that's how smart he is he don't care about dumbass people that's the thing you know a lot of the people who make fun of smart people are just dumb because they can't fathom you know but um, Vinyl, uh, Lionel's gotten on line and talked about having caught, you know, seeing stuff in the, in the air that he can't identify, UFOs or whatever, out in his area. I'd like to see them. I take him seriously. His music's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, do I have any plans for my birthday today? stop and think about it folks we're in a fucking pandemic okay this i think this is, this is you know let me just rip on that for a second i think that's part of why we're failing in our approach to this crisis health wise is because people are so quick to forget reality they want to run from reality and just do what they want to do you know i'm happy to be alive i'm keeping my ass the fuck at home drink some coffee and puff on some weed that was given to me for my birthday yeah I'm telling you saying it straight up I've been online talking up all kinds of stuff music and race and I'll continue it yesterday had a long diet a long one if you go on my 
page you'll see where a a white person who I don't know of, but a fellow musician, got on there with on did what a lot of white people are doing, and I'm gonna call you out on it. I called him out on it, and other people caught it and jumped in. He was being self a self righteous white person trying to tell me about my struggle about the police. And I'll say it in the real plain I'll put him in his place. Don't come talking shit to me. You have the nerve as a white man to try to talk to me about what I have to say about the police. I was saying that, you know, blue lives matter. They're getting ready to have a rally here in Omaha. That's a code word to people like me that it's, it's people saying, Stand up for the police is really saying we just really are scared of you black people and we want them to keep killing you. That's what it tells me and that's what I got on and said and this so-called white ally couldn't handle it. I get on this morning and see where he has atoned. He wrote it and said, well, I learned something yesterday. I just waited because he kept going on and on and on. And I finally said to him, this is not about you. And you don't get it. And you're not listening. You say you're an ally, but you're not listening to me. I'm black. You're trying to talk to me about how I should feel about the cops. You never have to worry about the cops doing to you what they do to me. So fuck you. I didn't say that. I was very diplomatic because I'm here trying to change things. But did I have justified anger and frustration with this man? I sure did. But rather than just getting mad and blowing up and treating him like crazy white people are treating uh, black people and hanging us, I helped him. I helped. I took the high road. That says a lot about this madness of racism. That's why it's so hard for white people to come have this come to Jesus moment because the, the shit is so deep for so long. We all just took it for granted and it became normal. It's not. A lot of what is normal is not okay. And we've just been de putting up with it. It's not okay. And you're going to hear about it from me because I want things to change. I'm 65 and I, I honestly don't think I'll see substantive social change before my death. Maybe if I'm able to live past 100, I might see some change. But in the next 5 to 10 years, am I going to see change? I want to. But the way it's going, I'm not. It's, it's, it ain't a change yet. What we have is an emerging awareness that things are really, really shit and have been for a long time. And it cannot, it cannot go back to the way it was. Can't. So thanks for being with me, folks. If I missed anything in the comments to say, uh, I missed it. I'll say again, don't do requests. And you folks that are making your recommendations and you leave links, um, I appreciate it and I don't because I have my own methodology and if you really want to hear want me to hear something that bad fucking send it to me I mean it just like that yeah don't be sending me all these links and shit and have you heard this have you heard this because the answer is yes fuck I haven't heard everything but compared to the most people apparently I have and I haven't heard hardly anything but that's what I'm saying, compared to the most people, apparently I have. People send me these lists and they list these people and every time it's like, yes, yes, yes. The avant-garde list there yesterday, there were some names I didn't know. But that doesn't mean that much because it's, because I'm always exploring. I'm aware of that world. I'm actually part of it. So, so feel me people, feel my spirit. 65 y'all I'm 65 years old man I used to worry about making it to 30 because both my parents are gone in their 50s both my parents were dead before 55 I used to really get on my I was very neurotic about that so I'm just really thankful to be alive thanks folks